Thank you so much. We'll see you later. 7.52 now. The diary of Anne Frank revealed what life was like under Nazi occupation. And now her best friend has written a memoir outlining new details about their relationship. Hannah Pitt Gosler first met Anne Frank when they were both living in Amsterdam in the early 1930s. And they became friends and went to school together. Now, Hannah died last year, aged 93. We're joined now by her daughter, Ruthie Mayer, and writer... Dina Craft, who collaborated on this new book. Very good morning, morning to both good of morning. you. R Ruthie, uh, oh, such a sad loss for you. Yeah. Just last year, y your mom died. A loss to all the family. She was the leader. She was the mommy, the big mama of all the family and, and for all, all the friends all over the world. She used to go all over the world very, very intensively since 1957. For 70 years, she would go and tell her story all around. Now, you, you can give us a guide, and we, we're going to see some pictures here. And I wonder if maybe, first of all, we, why don't we draw attention to the picture, which is in the studio here, mm -hmm. which is the picture of your mum with Anne Frank. When would that have been? Do you know when that picture was? Give us a, a sense. And where would they have been? What was happening at that time? Nothing special. They were standing in the in the street with some friends it's a bigger even bigger picture yeah. so this was in just to explain to people this would have been in amsterdam yeah and your your mum then as a young young girl had moved there from berlin yeah she and, came at four years old and they thought they'd gone there to a place that would be safe yeah because on the first world war holland was not involved right holland was neutral so her parents thought holland was a safe bet Holland would be okay. They'd wait out the war in Holland and be able to go back to Germany possibly after the war. Um, they, in, at this, in the time of this picture, the little girls are outside of their house in a beautiful green area. Um, they, live in a very, they live in a very protected life. You know, they're playing hopscotch and drinking hot chocolate and uh, playing hide and seek and later on ping pong. And despite the sort of the, the winds of the world kind of closing on them, they had a very safe sort of protected life until they didn't. And they had also a lot of pictures because there were three girls, Anne, Hanne, Zane, and the mother of Zane was a photographer. So they have a lot of very nice pictures. Perfect. You know, a lot of people would have read the diary of Anne Frank and, you know, and have it imprinted in their minds when they read the diary of a young girl and her experiences. And what Hannah did, your, your mum did, was kind of, she almost picks up the story because there is that gap where, Hannah, um, where Anne goes to the concentration camp and you don't know what happened. Um, and then the reason her diaries were published is they were hidden, the secretaries of her father found them and published them because she'd always dreamed of being a writer. Dina, how did you get involved in collaborating with this and telling the next part of the story? Yeah, so I was lucky to have interviewed Hannah many years earlier um, in Jerusalem when I worked uh, for the Associated Press. And then got a call that uh, Penguin Random House was looking for somebody to help collaborate with Hannah on the story. And I was delighted, you know. It was, uh, I am the daughter of Holocaust survivors myself and a family that was sought refuge um, from Europe. And um, to tell the story, you know, the story of loss and friendship and connection and humanity and preserving your humanity even in the darkest moments in human history um, was a real privilege. And Hannah and I, you know, it turns out we spoke just in time, you know. Hannah died shortly, I mean, Hannah died while we were working on the book. Luckily, we had done most of the interviews already. And it's a reminder that every day we are losing Holocaust survivors. And what we, and, and, and at a time when anti-Semitism is rising again and hatred and racism, and we have people and politicians around the world othering other people, this story feels more urgent really than ever. Did you think um, that your mum recognized that? You know, Dean is saying that of there's course. a prize of this, this hatred. Was, was the, your mum noticing that? The main that goal today? of her life. She would do it for years, as I said, for 70 years, going and telling the story how, and how? talking to people and saying, we were all created in the image of God. How can it be that we harm each other? But even and the Jewish children that were killed, they never harmed anybody. They were just different. I think my point is that even when your mum, aged 93, was working on this book, 
And as Dina said, she you know, was still seeing. She was very lively till the very last end. So was she still seeing kind of this emergence of hatred and, you know, um, All bigotry? All the time. And how did All what the she time. saying about And it, especially in the last year when they talked about the betrayal of Anne Frank and they had the Netflix film. So she was all the time talking about it. Uh, and she had Zoom with 600 uh, schools in Germany on the birthday of Anne Frank, on the 12th of uh, June, when she had to be 93. Mm -hmm. Next week, she had to be 94, Anne Frank. I mean, Hannah, Hannah lives the cautionary tale that hatred kills, that racism kills, it, or it can, you know? And, uh, you know, she was able to, you know, she, her friends, there's a picture, I don't know if we have, a, have it here, there's a photograph of her and um, Anna's friends. It's Anna's 10th birthday party. It's in June. By the way, Monday would have been Anne Frank's 94th birthday. Yeah, so You know, good. I mean, she could still be with us, you know, today. And uh, in that picture, you see Hannah next to her friend Anna and her friend Sana and her, next, and her friend Julie. And all of those girls, those were Jewish girls, they were all murdered. And there they were in their little party dresses and their Mary Jane shoes. And they lived this life that they thought was self safe and protected. And Hannah always spoke to me about how the world can change so quickly in an instant. And that we have to be very, very vigilant. <laughs> yeah. Ruthie, did, did uh, Hannah share her stories with family all the time? I know she went very public with her story, you know, telling it to lots of people. Is it something she did as a child? Do you remember being told the stories? We, we grew it. We grew with it all the years, and not only me, my brothers, and my children, and my grandchildren. Even six, a six-year-old uh, grand, great-grandchild of my mother talked already in, in school and told the story. And can I ask you, that because as you rightly say, this book is full of charm mm -hmm. and innocence in a way, but it's also full of very, harrow very harrowing things yeah. that happened to your mother. It, it must be a combination of emotions when you hear it and see it. And I know you know the stories well, but and it must be very emotional for you. Yeah, it is. And I must say she never liked to talk to children under 13 years old because she really thought it's not an easy story. Yeah. But all the family knew and all the, all the friends, everybody, you know, 70 years going and talking, everybody knew her. She would go in the streets and people, oh, mm -hmm. and not, not in Israel, everywhere in the world, it would be just... Well, there's no question, this book, again, will draw attention to her story and that, that crossover of lives, you know, at that point in time. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to us today. It's my pleasure to meet you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Pleasure being here. Hannah Pitt Goslar's book is called My Friend and Frank. Time now to get the news, travel and the weather where you are. Good morning. Investigations are continuing to the death of a 14-year-old boy at a school in West Lothian.